Hi everybody, I thought I'd make a video about effective ways to uh, get the most out of Drishti, especially this spiffy new version 3.0 when you're doing a virtual dissection or when you want to do a virtual dissection. And the specimen I'm going to use to show you this is a white tooth shrew, Crocodura olivieri. And I'm opening it now into low res mode. And what you see here is that low res mode uh, block where all the voxels are being rendered and all I only want to show you this skull and jaws and so there they are. In order to get this far you'd need to use have used Drishti import which will enables you to convert say a stack of TIFF images that you'd get from a CT scanner into a Drishti readable volume. I have videos on how to do that elsewhere. We won't talk about it now but what I will do is go into high res mode and that I'll do by hitting the F2 button on my keyboard, which will now render the whole skull, or at least everything that you see here, in, into high-res mode. And I can use the left mouse button and left click and hold and rotate, which rotates the volume. I can use the right mouse button, uh, move it around, and that will sh sort of um, push and pull the image uh, without rotating it. Anyways, a couple things to note. High-res mode is clearly better or more aesthetically appealing than low res mode, but it's, this particular scan doesn't really default well, shall we say. Um, one little thing you can do, of course, is get rid of these white lines. That's all you do is hit the letter B. Um, I personally prefer a white background, so I'm going to hit left mouse button, click on the view menu, go to preferences, click on background color, obviously, and I'll select white. And there you go. It's still a little dark though, and you also notice how the color changes when I when I rotate it. So let's try and fix a couple of those issues. So firstly, I'm going to go back into my view menu, click on the shader widget, and what I'd like to do is make that the the uh, contrast a little more obvious. So I'm going to move one of these shader widgets, um, the diffuse widget, farther up, and then I'm going to move the ambient one further down. And at first glance, it sort of makes it even worse, doesn't it? But don't fear. In combination with another option, which is GI lighting, I'm going to hit the functions menu, click on GI lighting, and I'm going to move this opacity TF set to one. You can use the, the arrow keys to switch that even higher. I'm just going to go up from zero to one, hit OK, and that makes a big difference. Um, and another thing that I, uh, that I prefer to make um, virtual dissections or publication quality images is to increase the opacity. It defaults in the middle. I'm just going to move that up. And you can see when I do that, it's a bit harder to see through the the skull walls. Of course, when you actually do have holes, you can still see through it, and that's going to be a reflection of what voxels are being rendered, and you change that in your transfer uh, function window here, and you can get to the point where you're rendering structures that aren't teeth and bone. I mean, the farther you get to this little blob there on the transfer function window, the more you're rendering various things, you know, the styrofoam cup or the gauze or whatever it was that the specimen was scanned in. You don't want that, if you're at least if you're interested in teeth and bones. Okay, so here we have then what I would regard as a much more attractive looking um, specimen that's that you can virtually dissect. A couple more minor things uh, that are, I think, just purely functional. Oftentimes, when I'm virtually dissecting, I just use the mouse wheel to zoom in. Sometimes the auto scroll is a little overzealous, right? So I'm not doing anything right now. All this is doing, uh, because it defaults to the, this, this auto scroll, you know, if I move with left mouse button um, and then move the mouse, put click and hold left mouse button, move the mouse, it'll start spinning, and I often usually don't want that, and that's easy to turn off. So you just hit the space bar, type auto spin off, and it won't do that anymore. So that I, I think that's a good thing. I also prefer the orthographic view. It doesn't exaggerate the structures in 3D as the, um, as the alternative. The alternative is perspective, you know, depends on, on taste, really. Anyways, now it's an orthographic view, and auto spin is off. Okay, so let's say, for example, I wanted to uh, show you this giant piriform fenestra that, that shrews have. 
Uh, this crocodura certainly has a big one. And it, what it is, is this gap basically in the roof of the middle ear. Now, it's, I, you don't need me to point this out to you. You can see it pretty clearly. But because the skull roof is still on, it's still intact in this specimen, it's not as clear as, as it might be. So what you might do is go into Drishti Paint, which you can. I've made other videos about that, and segment out just the part of the basic cranium that you want to see, and then you wouldn't have this skull roof um, you know, covering up the white background. But an easier way to do this is to use a clipping plane. And so in order to do that, you just uh, hit C for clip. That's all I've done using the keyboard. I just right-clicked and dragged this volume back towards the middle so you can see it. Um, and now I'm going to left-click on this blue axis. You notice there's an orange axis there that I left-clicked on, sort of a green one there, indicating the directions in which you can move this clipping plane. I'm going to go back to the blue one. I left click and drag and now I can shave off that part of the brain case. Now I can right click and drag it up and down corresponding to the bit that I want. I just want to shave off that top of the brain case so when I move it like that you can see right through the top of the, the roof of the middle ear and then that's very obvious isn't it that that is an unossified part of this animal's basic cranium. Um, a lot of times one will accidentally click on the clipping plane when, you're, when you want to actually just rotate the volume and that's easy to get around. Just hit the V on your keyboard and your clipping plane disappears. I'm toggling. Hit the V button. It appears. I hit it again. It disappears. Yeah. And you can have multiple clipping planes. You know, if I just want half of the skull, I'll hit the C button again. Move it so that that blue part is visible. Left click and drag. And there I have half of my skull, and I can right-click, and, and without rotating the clipping plane, you can move it around too. And my other clipping plane is still there, so if I hit V again, there they are. That's one clipping plane that I made, and there's the other, right? I don't actually want that one, so I'm going to hover over it with the mouse, I'm not, and then all I do is hit uh, Delete, and then that clipping plane disappears. And then I want this one to be invisible. I don't want it to disappear. I want it to be invisible, so I hit the V button again. Okay, so another thing that's really useful when you're virtually dissecting a volume in Drishti is to be able to change the point of rotation. So the default is somewhere in the middle of the whole volume. Let's say I wanted to look at these ear ossicles, right? And it's a bit awkward to do that when the point of rotation is way over here somewhere. So all I have to do is, you know, point the mouse button where I want it, hold down shift, and then right click and Drishti tells me that the rotation pivot has changed, and I hit OK, and now the whole volume is rotating around that point that I just shift right-clicked. Yeah, so that, that's, that could be quite useful. Okay, another, a couple more things. If you want to get rid of this uh, uh, metadata towards the bottom of the screen, that's easy to do. You hit the question mark, and that'll disappear. Notice also when I rotate, the quality of the image goes down a little bit. And partly that reflects still and drag, right? So this is just the preferences button that I've left open in the view menu. So if I move the drag quality way down, you can see it turns into soup when I try and drag it. No, that's awful. Um, you know, if you're, if you're short on RAM, you can see uh, AJ's little help note explains everything right there. If you let the mouse hover over it a little bit. Anyways, if you're low on RAM, that can be useful. But... Um, you know, if you got a decent graphics card and decent RAM, you don't really need to have such low quality drag. Even though when they're when they're equal, right? I can move the still quality up here using page up, page down, and that increases the still quality. I'll call back my metadata. You can see the step size now is changing. I hit page up, and that's increasing the quality to a maximum of 0.1. I'm going to go back down to around 0.8. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so even when the drag quality and still quality are supposed to be identical, they're actually not. You can see that the quality does drop a little bit, but that's easy to solve too because all I do is hit the H button, which then compels Drishti to keep the image quality the same when I'm dragging and when it's not being dragged, right? I'm just left mouse button, uh, drag with the mouse, and you can see that the quality is still pretty good. Okay, and then the very last thing I, I thought I'd mention briefly is a scale bar. Very simple. Um, you want to have a publication quality figure. You need a scale bar. Type the space bar. Type logically. 
scale bar and you have to know what the voxel size was and I'll show you where to find that. M mine is set to millimeters so if I want a scale bar of, of five millimeters, sorry that scale bar without a space, scale bar five, hit OK and there it is. This, this is a very small little mammal and then you see that I'm moving it. I'm going to get rid of that, the metadata and then I hover the mouse over the scale bar. It is surrounded in the red uh, there and that is then, you know, I can screen capture, press print screen on my keyboard, um, for example, and, and that's my figure with a scale bar. So, um, yeah, and then the, the where you can double check that you have the correct voxel size is in this panel right there, right? You can change that in your Drishti file. Um, it really is something that you should correctly enter when you make the uh, volume when you convert, say, a TIFF stack, for example, to a Drishti volume, that you, you should have that. And as long as we're on the subject, I'll just flip briefly to the little header file that goes along with Drishti uh, files. So the one that you actually make via Drishti import is that here, right click. It's just a text file. You can edit it with any editor like Notepad++. And then that tells you what the voxel size is. And you can change that. It'll still open. As long as you don't change the file name itself, um, you know, you could change that to microns or, or whatever you want if you accidentally typed in the wrong uh, voxel size. As long as that's correct, then your scale bar should in turn also be correct. Okay, thanks a lot for listening.